Joyce Majuro, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Uh, Zimbabwe has witnessed unprecedented protests this year. Thousands of Zimbabweans have taken to the streets, yourself included, to demand change, to demand an end to Robert Mugabe's rule. If Zimbabweans want change, why should they vote for you, someone who's been around on the political scene for more than 30 years, who was part of the Mugabe political project from day one, uh, who treated him like a father figure, I think you once said. What are you offering that's new, that's different to what's come before? Zimbabwe People First is an inclusive party. I have given people freedom to do what they feel has not been done and which the freedom fighters fought for. And they have seen that this ZANU-PF have since changed course. And it's quite obvious that the people of Zimbabwe have seen that we are a different uh, animal altogether. Even when I was within ZANU-PF, the way I was dealing with issues, the way how they used to accuse me that I was a liberal. But you served in his government, in Mugabe's government, from the beginning, from 1980 onwards. You were his vice president for a decade, from 2004 to 2014. It's all very well criticizing him and ZANU-PF now and calling for reforms now, but why didn't you say or do more when you were in power, when you were in office, when the violence was going on and you were effectively complicit in it? You were the vice president. Actually, uh, in 2008, it's on record that I even addressed and calling and asking who was giving orders for people to go and maim and kill others. And I'm sure this is the reason why they were in cahoots or clandestinely working against me. And when we were in cabinet, when we were discussing matters that involved people and I discovered that there isn't any way where the government is showing an inclusion of the ordinary people. So I was trying to work out from within. OK, you were trying to work from within, you say. It's a fair argument. Let's go back further. Yes. Back to 1983, the Gukurahundi massacres in Zimbabwe, perhaps the darkest period in your country's post-independence history, more than 20,000 Zimbabweans killed by Robert Mugabe's military. Not only did you not speak out against those horrific killings at the time, despite being in government, your late husband, General Solomon Majuro, was the commander of Zimbabwe's armed forces at that time during those killings. Your question, I think, is well answered by the report of the Justice and Peace. If I can draw you to that report, it's quite clear what really was discovered what role uh, uh, Solomon Mujuru played, what role uh, Joyce Mujuru played. So it's not something that I can tell the world things that did not happen or did happen. But I think we have a report to that effect. You know what Gukura Hundi 5th Brigade was. It yes. wasn't the, in the main you know, you know, you know, army of Zimbabwe. It was a private army. And which reported directly to Mugabe. Okay, and you so all but, that but is hold on. known. You and, all and your that husband. That report. Fair enough. It reported directly to Mugabe, but you and your husband directly reported to Mugabe. Neither of you spoke out against those killings. I don't know if you did it in private. You certainly didn't do it in public. Neither of you quit your jobs in disgust at the murder of twenty thousand of your fellow citizens. Did you? You know, even those that came to inquire from Mugabe himself. He categorically refused that such things were happening in Matabeleland. That is on record. And you believed him. So what else were you expecting? I, 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 of course, that's what he said. And what else can you say when somebody who is responsible has answered in, with a straight face that with whatever you're thinking is happening, nothing of that sort. I, as the head of state, I'm just trying to sort out things that are not going on well. Of course, you have to believe him. Okay. But who, who knew that this was a secret army, Over, which, go, which was going straight to him? Over the 30-plus years you served in government alongside Robert Mugabe, human rights abuses, killings, massacres, murders, do you have any regrets about what you were part of? Or is your conscience completely clear today that you did nothing wrong being part of that? Being a Christian... 
And being somebody who is now on terraces, now I'm being availed to some of the things that are even shocking, which I am even asking myself, did these things happen during my days in government? Because they were never public things. Surely, for a person who, is, who has a human heart, you have to feel bad and sorry and say sorry to those that have been you know, affected. But what should I do now? I should also be able to show the commitment and love that you know, I should give to those communities, and hence I'm visiting them. You say that a lot of this stuff wasn't publicly available at the time. You learned a lot of the, about the crimes, alleged massacres, etc., that happened after the event. But your husband, Solomon, died in a fire in 2011. Uh, many people claim he was murdered. You believe he was killed by the Mugabe government. Is that right? That's an issue that has not been concluded. So I shouldn't give an answer to something that is still there for you know, further, you know, discussions and uh, further investigations. Because I'm just wondering, you carried on serving in Mugabe's government for another three years after your husband's death. Were you really working for Mugabe while secretly thinking, this man killed my husband? I cannot accuse Mugabe for having done that. I'm saying it's an issue that is, already, that is still being looked into and it's yet but to But you have voiced have suspicions before. You haven't cleared Mugabe of that crime. You think he might have done it? How can I how can I clear people in government when I know that what we had requested as a family was not accepted by that government? Do you fear for your own life today? Do you think President Mugabe wants you dead, that he or some of his allies might try and assassinate you back home in Zimbabwe? You are trying to ask an opinion of somebody from me. I don't know what his opinion is about me. But what I can say is, his administration w were sending people to my farm, which people were being apprehended, and we don't know what their result, the result of their coming there was going to be. So I don't know whether he wanted to do something, you know, you know, you know, serious about my life, but this is what was happening. One final question before we finish. Can we clear something up once and for all? Did you really shoot down a helicopter with a machine gun when you were 18 years old during the War of Liberation? Because a lot of people say it never happened, but it's a, it's a key part of your backstory, your legend as a freedom fighter, isn't it? But why is it that when Joyce Mujuru did what she did on the 17th of February in 1974, it has remained on as a topical issue and whoever is raising it has never been with me in that battle and never saw me during that time and that story was never published by Joyce herself in the first place but it's a story that was reported before my arrival in Zambia in 1974. So did it happen or and not? When I'm I unclear. Did it happen or in, not? It did happen. You it shot down a helicopter happen. with a machine that's why gun. I'm giving you, yes, wow. that's why I'm giving you by date, by year. And for those that are talking about it, it's because their participation in the struggle was a very minimal, if not none. Joyce Majuro, thanks so much for joining me on Upfront.